Are you a photographer that's decided to make the leap into printing your own images? Or have you been printing images and not getting the results that you desire from your print? Whether it's just to hang on the wall at home or whether it's to print in order to sell to customers, my step-by-step -step guide is gonna help you ensure the maximum quality possible so that if you are selling those images, your paying customers will come back as returning customers at a later point. Afternoon guys and welcome back to the channel and if you're new here, my name is Jody and I'm a landscape photographer based in West Sussex in the UK. What I'm going to take you through today is all of the steps and checks that I go through to make sure that when one of my images are ready for print from my editing program, which in this case is Lightroom, to the printer, that all of the settings are right, all of the checks are in place, all of the profiles are correct, so that when the printer does print the image, that it's going to look at its best as it possibly can. But there's a number of things that we need to consider before we get there, so let's look at them. Number one consideration is paper. Not all paper is created equal when it comes to printing, and especially if you're planning on printing fine art images for customers. Although technically you could just print on the papers that you can get down at your local supermarket, Tesco, Sainsbury's, be the equivalent of you going to a a la carte restaurant, them serving you fine dining food and serving it to you on polystyrene plates. It really is that important. So what do I recommend? So when it comes to paper, my absolute go-to is the papers that you can get from Photospeed. And I'll leave a link in the description to Photospeed's website. I'm not affiliated with or sponsored by Photospeed in any way, I'm just offering you the best advice that I can based on my experience of printing fine art images to date. Now, all or at least most of the papers that Photospeed offer, and there are many, are cotton-based and of a GSM of around 300. Now, if you're not familiar with what GSM is, it's essentially how dense and how thick the paper is. So if you think about a document that you might print on A44 from a Word document, for example, it's probably gonna have a GSM of about 70. And the higher the number is, the closer you're getting to card. And when it comes to fine art images, that kind of 300 GSM is generally around where you wanna be for printing a, a fine art image and making it available to a customer. But it's not just about the GSM, it's also about what type of finish on the paper is gonna suit the image that you're printing. So there are lots of different types of finish of paper that you also have to consider when it comes to printing a fine art image. And they range from very reflective, so very glossy, to matte finishes that don't give off any reflection and from my own personal experience the kind of landscapes that I print when generally my customers are going to be putting that on a wall they want something that's not very reflective because there's nothing worse than having a picture hanging on the wall and then not being able to see it in the right sort of light because there's a lot of reflection from the, either the surface of the paper or the glass that it's mounted behind. So choosing the right type of paper is really important as well here. From my experience, based on the papers that I use, generally there's two that I use more than others. One is called Platinum Burrita from Photospeed and that is a semi-gloss finish, but it's a beautiful finish, a really nice paper. And probably my nine times out of 10 paper is gonna be the NST Bright White that Photospeed offer. And if you want to look into the different types of papers that Photospeed offer, then they do have different sample packs that you can order so that you can just get a sample of each of the different types of paper, print an image, and then see what you think looks best. So paper, I can't emphasize how important that is when it comes to delivering a high-end, high-end finish image to customers that they're gonna really value and really think that is you know, of suitable quality when it comes to the amount of money you're gonna charge for your images. So what's next? Well, we're gonna now look at monitor collaboration. So consideration two is monitor collaboration. And from a monitor collaboration perspective, and again, not affiliated by any of these products or companies that I'm gonna mention here, I use the Data Color Spider X Elite to collaborate my monitor. And what essentially that's gonna do is it's gonna make sure that when I'm working on my images in my editing suite, that all of the adjustments, the changes, the shadows, the highlights, the colors 
they're all going to reflect correctly on how that image is then output and then viewed by others. So there's nothing worse than editing an image, making it look like how you think is right, and then the colors being different on your monitor to you know, either other monitors or your printer, for example. So I would say that is not necessarily an essential step, collaborating your monitor, but it is one that will just offer that you know, extra quality and making sure that when you are editing your images, that you know that the output of what you're seeing on your monitor is gonna reflect how that image looks to your customers. Consideration three is the printer itself. Now, when it comes to printing your images, you've got two options. Obviously, you can print on your printer at home, or you can send your images off to a printing company and they take care of it for you. From my perspective, there really are two considerations here to take into account that will help you decide which is right for you. The first being the amount of printing that you're gonna do, and the second being how much control you want over the process. So I'm a bit of a control freak. I love sort of having control of all of the steps that are involved, taking my image from my editing suite right through to the output of the printer. But not everyone wants that level of control. And when it comes to the amount of printing you're gonna do, this is really a serious consideration because if you're gonna be purchasing one of the you know, high-end printers that you can get that will have the ability to output some you know, really classy high-end images, then it's gonna cost probably upwards of a thousand pounds for that printer. And then the inks that will go into that printer as well will probably cost at least half of that as well every time you need ink. So you know, a full set of inks on something like a Canon Pro 1000, I think there's 12 cartridges there and a full set of inks that are inks that are from Canon will probably cost you around 400 pounds every time you want to buy them. So there has to be a, you know, a real requirement to use your printer and that probably, you know, is going to be significantly more than printing one or two images a month to make it financially viable. So the printer itself and whether you really should be printing at home, you need to really ask yourself, is printing at home right for me? So we've talked about the paper, we've talked about monitor collaboration, we've talked about the printer. Now let's move into getting the image from the editing suite ready to go to the printer. So we're gonna now jump across to my editing software, which is Lightroom. So I'm doing a screen record for you guys so you can kind of see the final checks that I'll do before I send an image to print. So what we're looking at here is an image that I took earlier this year on the Isle of Skye. It's at a place called the Fairy Pools. If you ever get a chance to go, I couldn't recommend it more. It's an amazing place. And we're gonna assume that I've done all of the edits that I wanna to make to this image in the develop module. And there is always one check that I will do and triple check before I send anything to print, which is to check for dust spots on your image. Now, a lot of the modern cameras, whether it be a DSLR or especially mirrorless, are very prone to dust spots getting on the image sensor. And there is nothing that will ruin an image more than printing something out A2 size only to see that you've got dust spots on your image. So I will always triple check this to make sure there isn't because we want the image output to be as high quality as possible. So in Lightroom, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna click, click on the clone module and there is two options here. We can either visualize the spots through a high contrast black and white image that will just accentuate if there are any spots, it makes it very easy to see them. And you can increase or decrease the amount of contrast there to see those dust spots, or you can just use the image itself and you know zoom in and, and look at different areas to make sure there are no dust spots. So this image only had one dust spot that I could see in the image and I've cloned it out here. What Lightroom will, will do is it will look at the dust spot that you're trying to clone out. It will use an algorithm to try and find another part of the image that matches what it is you're trying to clone out. And it will usually does, nine times out of 10, it does a great job in matching what it is you're trying to clone out with another part of the image, but you do have the option to change it if you need to. So we've done that. I'm happy now that there is no dust spots that we need to be concerned about. So I'm gonna take this image across to the print module. 
Now in the print module itself, this is where you're going to select kind of what type of paper it is that your printer is, uh, your print is going to be printing to and some other options down the right hand side here in terms of the image look that you're going to be printing. So nine times out of 10, I print with margins that are 25 mil all around. I will adapt that if, you know, if a customer wants something specific, maybe we're going to increase that to a 50 mil border around the image. Maybe there might be some alterations to that as well. If a customer maybe wants, you know, the, the image to be signed and dated um, or numbered, but nine times out of 10, I think I'm printing to 25 mil margins so working our way down here you know there's all sorts of options that you can work through and change to make sure that the image output is going to be as you wish watermarking that is never something that i would do for an image that i'm going to be delivering to a customer in terms of print resolution and sharpening you know the, these kind of options i think especially when you're printing through the same bit of software that i you know i do Lightroom in, in most cases, you come to know what kind of looks best from an output perspective and all of these options will be remembered. So print resolution, you don't have to tick this, but you know, I, I do, I, I usually select something around 400 PPI here. Sharpening, I keep it low and media type, I mentioned earlier, I'd much prefer and most, most of the time I'm printing to matte type of paper and therefore that's what we're gonna select here. We're gonna have a matte type of finish. Color management, now this is probably the most important thing that you need to consider. And it's a bit of a rabbit hole that you can go down here. So I'm gonna kind of try and keep it high level. You have options when it comes to color management. So how the printer is gonna interpret what it is receiving from the program in terms of colors. So you can either have that printer take care of the color management. You can have your software whether it's an i'm sorry your your hardware whether it's an imac or whether it's a laptop take care of that but you can also have profiles that are associated with your color management because not all paper and not all printers will print the same so you can incorporate what are called profiles and these profiles are different depending on what your printer is and lots of other things that can go into why a profile will look a certain way. Now I mentioned earlier photo speed paper and what they offer is free color profiles based on just some steps that you'll take in printing to your printer. You'll send them exa an example of that print and then they will analyze it and make sure that everything is correct and then they'll send you back a profile, you load it into your editing software and then you can just select that profile when it comes to printing a certain image. So. For example, if I'm going to print to NST Bright White, for example, that will have a different profile to the Platinum Burrito paper that they also offer. And you have the option to select each of those different profiles as you go through. Now, for the purpose of this tutorial, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go with managed by the printer. And from my experience to date, the Canon Pro 1000 printer that I have doesn't awesome job of interpreting colors from my iMac and always the output that I see at least is as close if not exactly the same as what I see on the screen. Another thing that anybody that's tried to print probably has, has noticed is that when it comes to printing the output of your print is often a lot darker than what it looks on your screen. It's because your screen that you're looking at is backlit and everything just looks a lot brighter than it will do when you're printing it out. So always be aware of that when you're printing images that you know you, you probably have to print at you know a stop or two higher than what your image looks on screen if you want the brightness to match what it looks like on the screen. But it will never be as bright as what it looks on your screen. What I do in Lightroom and for my particular setup is I increase the brightness for the print adjustment to plus 18. And what I find is that this is the right level of increasing the, the, the brightness itself so that it as close matches to what I see on my screen as possible and to make sure that the output of that image 
really does reflect what I want the image to look like. So once we've done all of that, we click on the printer tab, and this is where you're gonna select what printer it is that you're gonna be printing to, and some of the things around how your, your print is gonna be matched. So we talked earlier about color matching, and you can see here I've got color matching from Canon. Um, we also have you know, layouts. We're gonna select A2 because we're gonna print an A2 image. Quality and media. This is where you can kind of select what type of paper it is, where it's coming from the printer itself. And then once you've made all of those adjustments, really you're ready to take your image to the print. So that's what we're gonna do next. We'll go to print. Okay, so we're now ready to print the image from the fairy pools on the printer. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I use the Canon Pro 1000. It has an LED screen that will give you information about the type of paper itself, whether there is any issues with the print levels of any of the cartridges. And we have loaded the paper into the backloader of the printer. So everything's ready to go. So let's get on with the print. Okay, so we've moved across to the printer now and you'll notice that I'm wearing these rather funky white gloves. They're just cotton-based gloves that are really there just to protect the image from any kind of grease or dirt that you might have on your hands. The last thing you want to do is produce a, an image for a customer and then for them to receive it with uh, unwanted fingerprints on the image. So again, I, I think that a bag of about 50 of these are only costing about five pounds on eBay. It's just the extra little steps that you can take in order to make sure that you're delivering as premium quality product as possible. So everything's ready, everything's set on the printer. We've made sure that there is no issues in terms of low ink uh, that's gonna impact the print and we're ready to go. So we're just gonna go across to the printer. We're gonna set everything in motion and the printer will then start to receive the data from your editing software and start the print. So what I'm gonna do now is just come back and show you some of the checks that I will go through while the print is actually happening to make sure that there, you know, is no, you no know, issues with the print, make sure that there is gonna be nothing that impacts the quality of the image. So I'll come back in a few moments and show you what that will be. So now the print has started, it's probably gonna take about four or five minutes to print at A2 size. One of the things that I will do, if need be, is to go and open the blinds to the room that I'm printing in, just to make sure that as much natural light comes into the room as possible. So I'm gonna do that now, and when I come back, the room is gonna look a lot brighter than it did before. So the print's well underway now. Uh, we're probably about a minute or two in. I can start to see the first output from the print itself, and this is where, if there is any issues with color or if the printer has made an error, you usually can see quite quickly. So the thing to do to preserve as much ink as you can, if there is a problem, is to cancel that job as early as possible so you can make the alterations and then correct what needs to be corrected before printing another print. What I'm also gonna do as the print itself comes out is I'm gonna use this light panel. And what I'm gonna be doing is just looking at the image in real fine detail to make sure if there is anything there that I need to be concerned about I can see it really easy through this light so this is the Manfrotto Lycos bicolor again not sponsored by anyone um, it's just this is something that does a good job for me you can change the Kelvin and temperature of this light to reflect how the uh, the image will look in certain lighting situations so what I'll always do is to give this a fairly neutral color so it's not particularly warm it's not particularly cold and I'll just hold it over the image just to look at what the output looks like and so far so good so I'll keep doing that as the image comes through just to make sure there's nothing there that I need to be concerned about so the print job is finished now guys and I must say that I am absolutely thrilled with the result the image has come out really nicely. All of the color, the detail, the contrast, the highlights, the shadows, everything really well matches what it looked like in my editing software. 
So what we're going to do now is we're going to leave it for 24 hours to dry and then it will be either ready to frame or it will be ready to package up and send to a customer. So I hope this kind of step by step process has been helpful to you and showed you that there is a lot more involved in printing these kind of high quality fine art images. It's not just a case of pressing print and sending it to a 40 or 50 pound printer that you can get down your local supermarket. If you have found this video helpful in any way, I hope you won't mind giving the video a like. And if you've got any questions, comments, thoughts, feedback, please drop a comment. I do read those comments and I will always respond to them. So any comments is always appreciated. And if you don't already follow the channel, then please give the channel a follow if you enjoy it. There will be more tutorials to come uh, like this one, but it'll also be a lot more of outside based content as well. So outside photography, hiking, photography tutorials that are based in the field. So thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate you taking the time. And as I said before, if you've got any questions about anything that I listed here, please do let me know and I'll list a link to all of the products and companies that I've mentioned in this tutorial in the comment section for this video. So thank you and see you again on the next one. <music>